continue to follow breaking news at this hour. Right now, Donald Trump has just released a lengthy statement after his indictment in New York. It reads in part, quote, this is political persecution and election interference at the highest level in history. The Democrats have lied, cheated, and stolen in their obsession with trying to get Trump, but now they've done the unthinkable, indicting a completely innocent person in an act of blatant election interference. And joining us now to talk a little bit more about this and the potential charges, Juliet Sorensen. She's a clinical professor at Northwestern's Pritzker School of Law, formerly with the U.S. District Attorney's Office in Chicago. Hello to you. Thank you for joining us. Hello, thank you. All right, so you just heard there the statement from former President Trump. Talk a little bit about how often you may have seen cases like this um, when it linked to, you know, hush money payments that were made. Anything that you, any insight that you can give us on that? It's exceedingly rare, to be sure. Um, I want to start by saying that the indictment, although it has been returned by the grand jury, that is to say the grand jury has voted to indict Donald Trump, the indictment itself has not yet surfaced publicly. Um, so the charges do uh, relate to the hush money payments uh, allegedly made to Stormy Daniels via Michael Cohen, who pled guilty to doing so. Uh, but we don't know precisely what those charges are, although we have a pretty good idea. Okay. You have a pretty good idea. So walk us through what some of those may be, potentially. Sure. So Alvin Bragg, the Manhattan District Attorney, is believed to have presented charges of falsifying business records in the commission of another crime. Um, and what is that other crime? Well, it's a campaign finance violation. What exactly does that mean? Uh, as I said, Michael Cohen, Trump's former fixer, uh, actually pled guilty to having paid hush money to Stormy Daniels, specifically not to tell her story of her encounter with Donald Trump. Um, and uh, and then candidate Trump, because he was running for president at the time, had paid Cohen back. So how does this violate campaign finance law? Arguably, this money was spent to help Trump win the election back in 2016, and therefore it should have been disclosed as campaign spending and subject to legal limits on donations. And as I said, Michael Cohen did plead guilty to this charge as part of a larger plea deal. So, Julian, let's let's follow that through. The case is obviously going to be built to a large degree on Michael Cohen's uh, testimony, anecdotally, yeah. and whatever records he can provide. If you're on the Trump side of the ledger, you say, hey, the, he's just got an ax to grind. You cannot, you cannot depend on this guy. That's absolutely right. I would argue if I were President Trump and his counsel that Michael Cohen is biased, that he is an incentive to curry favor with the prosecution, uh, that he would say anything to seal his deal um, and make himself look good. Um, and to be sure, uh, if it's uh, ultimately a jury uh, who is evaluating the evidence that's presented to them, they should uh, consider allegations of bias very carefully. But it's the jury who's the finders of fact. So if President Trump does not plead guilty to these charges that have been returned against him, I guess we'll find out when uh, time comes to have his day in court at trial. All right. We'll see Juliet Sorensen from Northwestern's Pritzker School of Law. We appreciate your time. Thank you.